This lesson is Unit 6, Lesson 4, Other Forms of a Line. So far, we've been working with linear equations in slope-intercept form. There are other ways to arrange an equation, though, that can be helpful in other situations or given other information. We're going to first quickly rev review slope-intercept form. y equals mx plus b. You're all very familiar with it. Note that the y is isolated and its coefficient is positive 1 and then everything else is on the other side. The coefficient of the x term indicates the slope of the line, and the constant is the y-intercept. Here are some examples of slope-intercept form. They should all look pretty familiar to you. Note that it's not possible to represent a vertical line using slope-intercept form. All right, another form is called point-slope form. It's called this because you can look at it and see the slope, but also see a point on the line. This is what it looks like. Note that the black y and x are the variables in the equation. Just like y equals mx plus b, there was a y and an x in our equation, and there's one in this as well. So the black y and x and the subtraction signs and equal sign and parentheses are all basic part of the equation that will always be there. m represents the slope. That's in front of the parentheses on the right side. And then we have another point, y1 and x1, that represent a given point on the line. So those are going to be filled in with numbers. Just like the m is going to be filled in with a value, the y1 and the x1 are going to be filled in with values from some ordered pair on the line. Notice that the subtraction is part of the form of the equation. So if y1 is a positive number, we're going to have y minus that number. If y1 is a negative number, it's going to be y minus that negative number, which ends up being positive. Here are some examples. You can see that you've got y minus on the left, and then a number times parentheses with x minus something on the right. So that tells you right off that it's point-slope form. Here's another example where the, the slope part is a fraction. Again, we don't always have subtraction in the equation if we have a negative 3 in that final spot, then x minus negative 3 ends up being written as x plus 3. We'll get into the details of that much further when we do the lesson uh, that really explores, explores point-slope form. Here's another example. You can see that we leave the 0 in there, and we don't simplify it to just be y. We keep it as y minus 0 so that you can see that piece of the ordered pair in the equation. Same thing if it's in the spot near the x within the parentheses. Our last form is called standard form. It's a little bit different. You can see that it's got the x term and the y term on the left, and it's important that the x term come first. And then on the right side of the equal sign is the constant. We have some specific rules that have to uh, be met for standard form. First of all, the coefficient of the x term must be a positive whole number. That a value can't be negative, and it has to be a whole number. We cannot have any fractions for coefficients. So the a term, the, I mean the a value, the b value, and the c value all have to be whole numbers or integers. A has to be a positive whole number. B has to be a positive or negative whole number, otherwise known as an integer. And the same with C. C has to be an integer. In addition, A, B, and C have to have a greatest common factor of 1. What that means is there can't be any common factors to A, B, and C. If there's a number that could divide out of A, B, and C, then that needs to be done to further simplify it so that it can be considered standard form. Here's some examples of standard form. x and y on the left, the constant on the right. The coefficient of x, 3, is a positive whole number. The other two, no fractions. 3, 2, and 8 have no common factor. Here's another one. You can see that the constant or the y coefficient can be negative. That's fine as long as the x coefficient isn't negative. Here's another one, and yet another one. That's it. 
So please complete the rest of your worksheet number four and go ahead and check and correct your answers when you are finished.